When I was a little girl, growing up in what is now Silicon Valley, many of my friends spoke Spanish. And little by little, I began to learn Spanish too. Simple words that kids would use on a playground like, ¿Tienes una mascota? Do you have a pet? ¿Dónde está tu casa? Where's your house? Or, ¿Quieres jugar? Would you like to play? I loved my playground Spanish. And as I grew up, I learned more and more of the language. And when I went to school and studied Spanish, I felt confident. I felt like I could speak Spanish well. Yet, in 1981, when I got a job with a little company called Apple Computer, I told them I spoke Spanish. And so my work took me to places around the Spanish-speaking world, places like Mexico, Venezuela, Colombia, and Peru. And I learned very quickly in those places that the Spanish I spoke with my friends and in my classroom didn't really do the job when it came to doing business. I had trouble understanding when people started talking to me as if they thought I understood. So I learned a word that was very important and that helped me so much. And here is that word, despacito. Despacito, por favor, I'd say. It was my way of asking, please, go slowly. And people did. And when they went slowly, something wonderful happened. They began to choose their words more carefully. They made eye contact. They stopped and paused and asked me if I understood. And I noticed something else. They smiled more. Now, of course, as I continued to practice, my Spanish got better. Yet I still found there was some magic in despacito. When I asked people to slow down, I enjoyed the conversations more. They were sweeter, they were slower, they were more interesting, and they were more connected. Later, as technology began to fill the world and shape our busy lives, I noticed that things became less despacito. We began to hurry more. We began to worry more. We began to think we had to do more and have longer and longer checklists to get ourselves through the day. I became part of that hurry and that worry as my life got faster and more demanding. Now, one thing I know is that hurry and worry does not equate to happiness. And as I began to study the brain, I began to see how this hurry and worry actually took away from our sense of happiness. It made us less connected. It made us less focused, less present. And it made our emotions more stressed and more confused. And I began to miss the world of Despacito. This touched me so much that I actually wrote a book about the brain and its place in happiness. And so much of that book took me back to that simple lesson of Despacito, where people took time to listen, took time to pay attention that they were being understood, did simple things like make eye contact, connect, and smile. When I was invited to spend time with you today, the people of the IIS community, I began to research the things that this community believes in, does, and creates together. And I was taken back to a feeling that I hadn't had in many years. I thought about someone who's been one of my heroes for a very long time, Temple Grandin, an autism advocate, and a spokesperson for animal rights. As an ambassador for the feelings and emotions of animals, Temple taught us to slow down and pay attention to what animals were going through, even as they prepared for the meat and other industries, and to connect with them in ways that actually changed an entire industry. She listened, she paid attention, she connected in ways the fast moving, hurry and worry world seldom does. I thought about the art of Frida Kahlo, an amazing artist from Mexico, whose childhood bout of polio left her walking with a limp and sometimes disabled throughout her life, and how the slowness of her interior landscape allowed her to share beautiful images of imagination with the world. 
I learned about a teacher, Noelia Garea, one of the first teachers in the world with Down syndrome, and the love, kindness, and slowness she shared with the preschool teachers she taught. I thought about a dancer named Alice Shepard, whose movement from within her wheelchair allows her to create a sort of beauty that we seldom see. Of Ludwig von Beethoven, who composed his most powerful music long after he was in the yard. And I began to think that the slowness, the observation, the connection that takes place in this IIS world, this world of inclusion, brought more hope and more happiness and more of the beauty of true espacito connection to the world. I thought of you, the members of this community, who I see as my host today, of your caretakers, your families, your teachers. And I thought that there was something beautiful in the way you connected and cared that all of us ordinary people in the world could learn from. And I felt happy that I was able to gain that from you. But then something wonderful happened. As I was learning more about this community, I stumbled by very good luck across the work of a young man whose name is Julio Serputu Sia. Julio lives in Argentina. Julio has Down syndrome. And his gift for playing guitar is so beautiful, I wanted to share it with you today. And you'll never guess what the song he plays is called. Despacito. As I listened to Julio, I felt he embodied everything I spoke about in my book. Persistence, the love of beauty, taking joy in our actions, connecting with others in ways where we share the gifts we have inside with the world in ways that make all of us better. Julio reminded me of the gift of Despacito, not only through his music, but through everything I imagined it took him his family, his caretakers, and all who loved him to share together. And I felt so grateful for the gift of paying more attention, of listening, of being patient, of choosing words and actions carefully to make sure we shared what was in us and we were understood. Julio, and all I've learned about you reminds me to take a deep breath and wait until others are ready before showing up with my hurry or my worry so I can make a more worthy offering to the world. Now, all of this despacito, it turns out, is better for us and better for our brains because no matter how ordinary or how unique our brains are, we are better when we go despacito. It's better for us as humans, as individuals, and on a societal scale. And the invitation I offer with you is to cherish the beauty of that despacito and set it as an example to others. In this hurried and worried world, we can all learn from it. The places where I find happiness are so often the places of despacito. The world moves too fast, and sometimes it seems to get away from us. Today, you have helped me remember and connect with the importance of, of slowing down and appreciating and truly caring for the world and the people around us. I find that muy linda, very lovely. And for that, I say thank you. Thank you, Alan. Despacito.
indeed a simple and powerful happiness hack and now we need you to share something more for our audience and here is my question ellen what does inclusion mean to you inclusion means belonging being part of something bigger and we are all part of this in the same way that a puzzle might only be complete when all of the pieces fit together this world this thing we are building is only complete when all of us fit together and everyone is included